Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is Captain Seth and your Uncle Paul. As always on the Everything Money channel, we appreciate you guys stopping by. Today, we're looking at Penn National Gaming. They're into casinos. They're into horse racing. They have a uh, one-third stake in Barstool Sports. And we want to look at the financials. Pretty popular stock. Um, Paul is going to chuckle about this because you have friends at Buster Chop over this uh, this uh, this stock. Are you so, familiar with Barstool? You know, I know it's all the rage. I don't know much about it. I mean, I really there, don't. It's, it's one of the greatest channels. Obviously, started by a, a Michigan grad, David Portnoy. He's hilarious. He does he does the pizza reviews. Okay, I one guess bite, one bite. Everybody knows the rules. I've been seeing that he's been supporting a lot of uh, national, uh, smaller brands out there. Yeah, it's his so new initiative. So he raised um, so far. I think it was like twenty eight million dollars for small business. He started with Marcus Lemonis. Marcus Lemonis wrote a five hundred thousand dollar check to start it. Ah, he's he is brilliant. I mean, he's so funny. He's a great creator of content. He's awesome. He calls himself the best trader in the world. Davey Day Trader, he calls himself. He says he's better than Warren Buffett. Um, it, it's hilarious, but my boys all give me chop, bust my chops about this one. Why is that? Well, in March, it was at $4.50. I see. And I said, and some of them bought it at like seven or eight. And I said, Joy, boy, imagine if your investment decisions were based on somebody like liking, this, liking one of the owners of the company. And now it's at 106. So one of my buddies, Kyle, always puts in the group chat that quote when I said that, uh, as it keeps going higher and higher and higher. Well, let's do it, folks. We're going to well, look. Kyle's at the, dead to me, so we're going to look at the eight pillar analysis of this, as we do always. Look at the PE, the profit margin, revenue growth, uh, profit growth, number of shares, assets over liabilities, and our free cash flow growth to see where we value this company and where it's uh, and how it compares to its current valuation. So let's get after Paul. What is the market cap of Penn National Gaming, baby? Sixteen and a half billion dollars. Mm-hmm. PE. Negative. It has no PE. Uh -oh, uh -oh. In the last year, it lost $773 million on $3.9 billion in revenue. Now, last quarter, I said I'm going to change our profit margin to the last full 12 months. Okay. Last quarter, they made 12.5%, which is great. I like their gross margin. I'm still going to give this an X because we're changing the way we look at profit margin. We're looking at the last year. 53.24% gross margin, though, is very solid. Very solid. Should we look at the... Revenue growth, pillar number three? Of course. I'm sure it's going to be a massive check. Let's check it out, though. Okay. Revenue growth, 3 billion, 5.3. Check mark. Okay. And that's still through, that's, that's just till 2019. Let's do the last 12 months. Oh, wow. Ooh, their revenue's down a lot. Ooh, wee. That's not good. Uh oh. Oh, boy. All right. But still a check mark, technically. The great news is our eight pillar software that we have that you can get by joining our Patreon. It's going to look at the last 20 quarters and not just the, the previous full year. It's going to look at the last 12 months versus the first 12 months. Sorry. Yes. Of the last 60 months mm -hmm. as our way of looking at It's going to be a much more accurate way of looking at the numbers versus this Y charts. Pillar number four is profit growth over the past five years. All right. Profit growth. <laughs> All right. I guess the check, it made 700000 to $44 million. <laughs> Check mark there. Jeez, yeah, that, that sounds like a check. Okay, how about shares outstanding as pillar number five? But remember, in the last twelve months, it's lost it's lost seven hundred seventy million dollars. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shares outstanding. Shares outstanding. Oh boy, big Fed X. Oh boy. Eighty million to one hundred fifteen million. They've almost increased by fifty percent the number of shares. So remember, guys, you have a pizza pie. You have eight slices. When you issue more shares. You're cutting up more slices. It's the same pie. You're just splitting it up into more. Now your, your share of the pie is getting smaller and smaller and smaller when they issue more shares. Mm -hmm. Right? So instead of, instead of owning one out of 10 shares, you now own one out of 12 shares, a smaller percentage of the company. Pillar number six is current assets greater than current liabilities. This really helps define maybe their financial health, Paul. Their current financial health. Yeah. 2.2 .2 billion versus 921 million. Yeah. Good time check. Big time debt. They have $12 billion in debt overall as a company versus $4 billion in revenue in the last 12 months, over five, $12 billion versus five some billion in the previous full year of 2019. That's a lot of debt. Three times their debt, that's a lot, especially when you're losing money hand over fist. Free cash flow growth is pillar number seven, Paul. Okay, so free cash flow, the good news is they do have free cash flow. So their free cash flow is a a reasonable percentage of their of their operating um, cash flow. So remember, free cash flow is cash from operations on the balance on the cash flow statement, less capital expenditures. This is the money they're going to use to pay dividends, buy back shares, make acquisitions, do things like that. They pay no dividends. 
they buy, they issue more shares. They don't even buy back shares. So keep that in mind. Okay. So 213 to 500. Check mark. Yeah. And then 305, 377, 178. The average free cash flow over the past five years is 314. Let's say times 20, $6 billion company. It's currently 16 billion. It needs to fall a lot. Now, let's look at the last 12 months. So what we did there, guys, we take their free cash flow average of the last five years, we multiply it by a, a, a factor of 20. Just like the PE, we want a factor of less than 20. You want to sit there, the factor should be bigger, should be higher if the company is growing faster and lower if the company is a slow grower or declining. And the reason being is, you should pay more for faster growth, mm -hmm. correct? If something was going to double every year for the next 10 years, you should pay a lot more than if something was going to stay the same for the next 10 years. Yep. That's pretty obvious. So that multiple of 20 is kind of trying to match the PE of 20, but then it's on you when you do further research to determine what's the accurate, what's the right ratio. We've had some reset there and said you should pay seven times free cash flow. We've had other ones where we've said you should pay 25 times free cash flow. It just depends on where the company is growing and what they're doing, Okay. So the last 12 months of free cash flow has been eh, not that bad, 240 million. Still lower than usual, but they still had free cash flow. I thought it was gonna be negative. So they still had it. Now, overall for this company, I hate to say it to my boys, but I just, even with growth of, I think you're paying triple almost what it's really worth. So to be able to justify that, you gotta think they're gonna grow their revenue and profit by I don't know the exact number, but 20, 30, 40% a year for, the, for, for a long time, for five, six years, that's a very hard thing to do. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's a very hard thing to do. I'll double down again, Paul, on, on your thoughts on, on quote unquote growth companies, because right below in this video in the comments, they would tell Somebody you that you're, you're straight up wrong, that this is a growth company, you're an idiot, and that the companies like the, the Tesla and the Neo, and remember Nikola, how great that was, um, those growth companies, you're just underestimating their future Correct. projected value. So first off, value and growth go together. Some people sit there and make the comments saying, well, you don't, have to, you don't look at growth companies in the value perspective and value companies don't work for growth. Incorrect. Growth is a factor in value. As an example, if you have a company that makes $1 every year for five years, what are you willing to pay for it? No growth whatsoever. Mm -hmm. What do you want to pay for it? Five dollars? No, because then you're gonna get your money back in the next five years. You're not gonna make any money. Four dollars? Eh. You're gonna make twenty-five percent over five years, about five percent a year. Two dollars? Okay. You're gonna make. You're gonna invest two bucks, get five back in the next five years. Not bad. Okay. The whole point is, it's some number. It's some number here that you can make it work. Now, let's say the company is gonna make one then two, then three, then four, then five. This These added together is $15. What do you want to pay for a company that's growing and it's going to give you $15 in the next five years? Would you pay two? Of course you would. 100% you would. Would you pay five? Of course you would. You're going to invest five today and get 15 over the next five years. So do you see the difference here? I still applied value investing to this, but the growth numbers change what I was willing to pay. That's what's important here is, what's your future stream you expect? What are you willing to pay to get that today? Same number of years, different growth, different price. So when people come out there and tell me growth and value are totally different, they are absolutely wrong. So what happens in society though, in the markets is, people see, sorry, people see this and think, oh my God, this is going to grow so much, I will pay whatever it takes. You might sit there and say, no, I won't. That's exactly what you're doing when you don't understand the numbers. And that's why I want you to come with us and learn how to understand these numbers to determine the right price to pay for growth. This is Neo. This is Workhorse Group. Uh, by the way, this it's is, even worse um, for Neo and Workhorse because I don't see any ca cash flow in these ones. Okay. And then when people see this one, they go, boring, I don't want it. And what happens to the price here? It goes to nothing. It goes to $1 and people are like, yeah, it's $1 because it sucks. I would gladly pay $1 today to get five over the next five years. Gladly. Mm -hmm. Tell me where to sign up all day long. Is it as sexy as this? No. But I'd rather pay $1 for this than $10 for this. Even though this one's growing faster. You have to remember that the difference between value investing and momentum investing 
is in value investing, you realize the growth leads to an end result price, end result cash flow. We're just taking all those cash flows back to day one and saying, what am I willing to pay to get a good return on my money for that future cash flow? That is the difference between value investing and growth investing. Growth investing doesn't factor in value. Value investing does factor in growth. You're just not overpaying for it. You're just not paying whatever it takes to get it because it's an exciting story. That's what's important here. What's the take home on Penn National Gaming? I'm avoiding it. It's got great momentum. Do you want to look at the momentum? Let's do it. It's got great momentum. It's been up for the last, I mean, it's up freaking 25 times in the last uh, nine months. So it's got a lot of, let's see the technicals. Let's see what's going on with the technicals. Now, guys, remember, here we have a blue line and an orange line. The blue line is the 200-day moving average. It's easy to describe. It's the average price of the last 200 days. And the orange line is the average price of the last 300 days, the 300-day moving average. When we back-tested 75 stocks, a basket of 75 stocks in the last 25 years, the last 20 years, if you bought when the 200-day went above the 300-day and sold when the 200-day went below the 300-day, you beat the market by about 1.2 to 2%. So as long as you're consistent and do it without questions, you will beat the market, according to our back-testing over the last 20 years. This one crossed over at around, what is this, right here maybe? So probably around, the, probably around the crash time, right here. Let's go do a little bit smaller, um, let's go one year. Let's go one year. It crossed over mm, somewhere in here actually. So if you'd bought it here around 15 bucks, you'd have made a killing. Mm-hmm. You'd still be riding it right now. Now, when it comes back down, it'll take you a while to sell and you're gonna give up a lot of profits but you'll be selling at a much higher price. You'll still make a good return. Speaking of riding, uh, those pants are very tight today. Come Paul. on, these I are not know, tight pants. I know. I do know a lot of our fans really love these tight pants and shorts that you I wear. Know, but, you know what's funny? I, mean, I was changing this morning going, what is Seth talking about with my tight pants? I don't wear tight pants. I mean, if you want to show off your, your junk bulge on a, on a Penn National... <laughs> look, can't even see the line, can you, Russ? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's our take on Penn National. It's an avoid at the moment. If you disagree, you I could... love David Portnoy. That's true. I love Barstool Sports. David Portnoy is a Michigan man, just like I am. He is the funniest, probably, guy on the internet, I think. He is hilarious. But unfortunately, for you, for me, I want to be able to invest money and gain returns on my money, regardless of who is in the company creating the content. If Paul's wrong, you can argue with him down in the, in the comments don't. below. He'll call you a moron, whether you're right or wrong. <laughs> and uh, that's the that's the hard-hitting news you'll get from the Everything Money channel. Uh, uh, check the link below, the description below for our Patreon. God, Paul, 400 members. Uh, we get 15 to 20 patrons a day. The conversations are incredible. And guys, for the Patreon, the lowest level right now is $8, and there's only 200 level spots left. The second it's filled, the it next gone. level goes to 12 immediately. Mm-hmm. And but remember, you still get the soft firm that comes out. You get the Discord with other 400 other investors who are all talking about investing every single day. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages that are exchanged every single day. And, and we hit 1,000 messages in a day yet. And two patrons will get test, brand new Tesla Model 3s, the giveaway this year. It sounds absurd that if we only hit 50,000 subscribers, someone's going to get a Tesla, where these other huge channels have to hit a million. But that's how absurd your Uncle Paul is in swiping his credit card. Uh, and so when he takes his wallet out of those tight pants, one of you, two of you will be getting Model 3s this year, and we can drive around and race them together, as I have a Tesla too, Paul. So love you thanks for your commitment and our og followers we love you from all over the world and we'll see you guys on our live streams tuesdays and thursdays at 1 p.m eastern thanks guys thanks for watching see you keep it real